Interchangeable lens systems are more accessible than ever before, and with the rise of DSLR filmmaking, people are being encouraged to make focal length a creative decision right from the lowest entry point. And this is a vital part of visual storytelling. But there is also a huge amount of common misunderstanding around what lenses can and can't do. It's often taught, for example, that telephoto lenses compress space and that wide-angle lenses expand space. And yet, technically, this is wrong. They don't have any effect on perspective at all. Technically speaking, swapping out for a telephoto lens is no different than just cropping into your image in post-production, other than a slightly shallower depth of field. Now, before this sets the internet on fire, let me explain what I mean with a couple of examples. Here is an image of my subject taken with an 18mm lens. You can see we've placed markers on the wall behind him, showing his relative size versus the background. Now we change the lens for an 85mm lens. We've changed crop or framing from a wide to a close-up, but if you look at the markers on the wall behind him, you'll notice that nothing has changed. Now let's blow up our 18mm image to match. It's not as sharp because it's been digitally zoomed instead of optically zoomed, but in terms of perspective, it's the same image. So, theoretically, if we had an incredibly sharp lens and a very high resolution sensor, there would be no need to use a telephoto lens at all. In fact, this is how Jeff Cronenworth shot a lot of Gone Girl and Girl with a Dragon Tattoo for David Fincher, shooting at 6K with the Red Dragon and cropping into his close-ups in post. But what about all that stuff about compressing space and changing perspective? Well, firstly, Compressing space or expanding space is a function of perspective. It's all the same. So how do you change perspective? Well, how do you change your perspective in everyday life? You move. All the effects we traditionally associate with wide angle or telephoto are actually just created by changing the camera position. Changing the lens just allows you to reframe the image and preserve your sharpness. Let's go back to our subject and the background. This is our close-up. Remember, this could be created with a telephoto lens or by cropping into our wide lens. Now let's move much closer to our subject. If you want to keep the close-up framing, we're going to have to use the 18mm lens, but look what's happened to the markers on the wall behind him. It's still a close-up, it's still on the same lens, but now we have a totally different image and we're seeing way more of the surrounding area in the background than before. Even the subject's face is starting to look different because of the effects of perspective. And nothing you can do in post can replicate this effect. This change in perspective can only ever be achieved by moving your camera. So why does this matter? If you're shooting on a cheap lens with a DSLR, you can't really crop in post anyway. So what's the point of all this? Well, let's see another example. This is Bob. Bob is DPing for an indie shoot and he's trying to shoot a fight scene. One actor is throwing a punch at another with a gap between them for safety. Bob is shooting a mid on a 25mm lens and from here the gap is pretty obvious and it's not selling the illusion. The director is concerned. Bob suggests that they cut to a close-up to sell the stunt, knowing that his magical telephoto lens is supposed to compress space and help sell illusions like this. And he's half right but he's been taught wrong. He swaps out for his telephoto lens, expecting the space to be compressed and the actors to feel much closer together, but they don't. The illusion looks just the same. We're just seeing less of the problem. What Bob should have done is stick with the mid framing, but decide to move further away. Now he can use his telephoto lens, safe in the knowledge that it was the act of moving that solved the problem and sold the illusion. Now the actors feel like they're right up in each other's faces. Of course, if the director now decides he wants a close-up, Bob can go even more telephoto. This will change the crop, but it won't increase the effect on perspective unless he moves the camera again. The opposite example might look like this. Bob isn't working on feature film anymore. He's now shooting a music video. This one is a hip hop music video. And he's been asked to shoot that dramatic hip hop close up off of Pink and Fiddy. Bob knows that wide angle lenses accentuate motion towards the camera, which is what should create this effect. He doesn't want to re rig his camera, so he just swaps out for a wide angle lens and decides that he'll reframe in post. He's got an expensive high resolution camera, so cropping should be fine. 
The problem is Bob still hasn't understood the relationship between perspective and position. The exaggerated effect isn't created by the lens, it's created by the close proximity to the subject. What Bob should have remembered is that effects like these can only be created by altering your distance to the subject. Alternatively, he could have just moved the subject closer to camera instead. So to wrap up, I'm not saying lenses aren't important, far from it. I'm just saying that what a lens controls is your crop and your depth of field, but all that perspective and compression you want, for that, you're going to have to up sticks and move your camera. Lastly, here is one of my favorite examples of why perspective is so important. An agency has hired you to shoot an image for a full page magazine ad. The talent is chosen, costume picked and location set, and you even have a storyboard showing the model framed from head to toe, leaning against a pile of logs. With all this information, you could legitimately shoot the image on the right or the left. Now, if you were trying to sell a GPS watch to an adventure-seeking audience, which would you choose? If it's an article on a handcrafted furniture designer, which would you choose then? The image on the left has been taken very close to the subject. He's dominating his surroundings. A slight reduction of only three inches in camera height has emphasized this. This image suggests that the subject has a dominance over his environment. The image on the right, however, has been captured a long way from the subject. From this new perspective, he's almost part of the landscape and part of his environment. He belongs in the woodlands and is a man of the land. These subtle changes are just the tip of the iceberg when discussing the psychology behind camera choices. For more in-depth tutorial, there's my new hour-long masterclass, but also make sure to check out our other free tutorials on our YouTube and Vimeo channels.